Welcome back to Woi Woi Oval for a continuation of today's Tui's Central Coast Rugby League Grand Final action. Next up is the Reserve Grade Grand Final fixture between the top two sides from the 2019 regular season, the Entrance Tigers in black and orange and the King Cumber Colts in their red and white strip. Only points differential separated these two sides at the end of 18 rounds. What will be the margin today? I'm Chris McPherson. I'll be joined later in commentary by Paul Arendale. We'll start off today's coverage with the team list. First of all, the minor premiers, the Entrance Tigers. In the one jersey, Joe Stewart. On the wing in 24 is Jake Woods. On the other wing in five is Jake Sanders. The centres, three, Broden Mills. Four, Sam McClellan. The halves are six, Jake Slee. And seven, seven Jared Hamer. The front row, Sean Sinclair in eight. Tom Maloney in ten. And the hooker is nine, Nathan Cooper. Their back row is 11, Josh Walsh, 12, Kyle McCudden, and 13, Bill Shaw. The bench, 14, Chase Partridge, 15, Jacob Koenig, 16, Daniel Pepper, and 20, Jordan Evans. For the King Cumber Colts, their fullback, Brody Cooper, the wingers, Kyle Lang and Jackson Stubbs. The centres in three is Jesse Byrne, the four will be Blake Donkin, the halves six, Reese Pipers, Seven is Mitch Clark. The front row is eight, Bailey Coombs. Ten, Alex Rosario. The hooker is nine, Ricky Chamberlain. The back row, 11, Logan Wiley. Twelve, Cade Donkin. Thirteen is Matthew Stone. The bench, 14, Jake Hardman. Fifteen, Josh Starling. Sixteen, Ryan Bender. Seventeen, Blake Wiley. Eighteen, Elliot Rosario. And nineteen, Jake Wadey. As we see the Tigers... Make their way onto the field, closely followed by the Colts. These sides have clashed earlier in the season, just the twice, and the results are split one each. So not much will be sure to separate them today. The officials for today's game, the, match, the referee is Rob Bowen. Touch judges are Lachlan Stone and Ben Thompson. And the in-goal officials, Scott Brame and Ben Greenfree. And we see... Both teams and the match officials go through the official proceedings to get us all set up to be underway. Very brief instructions from referee Rob Bowen. And it looks like it's going to be the entrance Tigers in their predominantly white strip kicking from right to left of your screen. And it'll be the late inclusion, Jake Woods, who'll get us back underway. Well, underway for the start of this reserve grade grand final. Referee Bowen checks with the timekeepers and gets us underway. And it's a towering kick to start from Woods, taken cleanly by the Colts. Coombs the first to take that forward. Strong contact early. Kate Donkin taking a second. Colts continue to march it out at their own end. Spread to the left. Unmistakable long hair of Reese Pipe as a first receiver there. Nazario takes it up over the 40. That'll be tackle five. Pivers kicks from just outside his 40. Broden Mills back. Looks like he's reshuffled to the wing. Stewart in at dummy half, gives it off. Both sides just trying to settle in and find their rhythm early. There's Woods. Working in tight around the ruck, the Tigers. And take that one just across the 40. Kick just outside the 40. Finds the fullback on the full there with his kick. Hamer, not what he would have been looking for. Cooper brings it back with some intent all the way back to the 30 metre line. So to come the short side, the Colts. And they work it back through the middle with Bill Shaw.
Again, they come in short side. Using Donkin again. Continues to pump the legs after contact. Picks up a few extra metres. Bark with a little dink. Kick into the corner. Tigers. Joe Stewart just watches that one roll across the touchline and they'll settle for the scrum here. As both sides settle into finding their rhythm as they feel each other out in the early stages of this game. Let's see the introduction. They have clashed twice earlier in the season. The first clash went the way of the King Cumber Colts in a low scoring affair, eight points to six. The second clash, back in round 15, was the entrance 18, King Cumber nil. The entrance have built their season around their defence. Both those score lines clearly reflecting that. Look to come back to the middle of the field now. Working it out of their own red zone. Sinclair with a strong run. Continues, almost breaks another tackle. Takes it up to the 40. Can't get the quick play the ball is after that. Cooper comes out, gives it to the right. Woods playing through the middle. It's a nice offload. Cooper shows, but holds it himself. First bit of attacking football here for the Tigers. Cooper makes no mistake with that. He beats the first two defenders, beats another. Skips sideways, continues to shrug off defenders, end up being collared by Sinclair. It's a good play, the ball. First penalty of the match here. Referee Rob Bowen against Brody Cooper. Walking forward and taking out the marker. It's the entrance with a prime attacking opportunity. 22 out, centre field. Interesting to see what they decide to do here early. Jake Slee just taking control, organising his team. Bill Shaw cuts at forward. He's about 16 out. 20 in from the Western touchline. Go to Slee. Got options with him. Drops Woods back underneath. Slips through the first tackle. Brought down 11 out. Bring it back to the middle. They go to Sinclair. He's brought down around the legs by Kate Donkin. Slee. Gives it to Shaw. Can't break through. Couple short. Where do they go here? They come to short side. Slee with a bat on. Broken free the tackle, but referee Rob Bowen said that bat on's gone forward. So the attacking opportunity will come to nothing. King Cumber Cole to breathe a sigh of relief that they've escaped that first defensive set in their red zone without any points. Looks like Slee's going to be the danger man today for the Tigers. Plenty of traffic run through him early. And with good reason, he is the leading point scorer in this competition. Piper's dummies, goes himself. Very slow ruck, but they get away without the Tigers. Come back through the middle of the field through Rosario. Tigers get plenty of numbers into the tackle and find him on his back. Logan Wiley, a solid run out over the 30. And then joined now by Paul Arendale. Paul, it's a cracking day here, good crowd building up. Yeah, good afternoon, Chris. It's a beautiful sunshine day in Wee Wee, but uh, just where we are, it's uh, blowing a gale. Oh, a bit of a break here, charge down. Questionable pass out of the hands of referee Bowen, goes with it. Kyle Lang, can he get to the corner? He does. Opens the scoring for the Colts. Might have been some questions about that if we had a bunker here at Woi Woi Oval, but referee Bowen and his touch judges are happy. I'll go with them when they're out there. What a try to start the scoring from the Colts. Mate, we could do with a bunker at the moment. <laughs> Get out of this wind this wind tunnel we are. Yeah, good uh, good little play. A bit of the commentator's curse. Come in and something happens straight away. It, uh, good to see the winger backing up. And, um, yeah, King Cumber, first points. Scores out wide. This wind blowing that you just touched on. Reese Pivers is going to have his work cut out from him try and convert out wide. We saw uh, a few people throwing the tee around in third grade having a crack and uh, probably not the highest success rate, so 
Yeah, good uh, backing up from Kyle Lang to uh, cross there. You see the uh, had a number of options. The centre, Jesse Byrne, and um, yeah, pass hit the spot. So uh, well done. You see Pipers lining it up out wide. He's about maybe back about 22, about eight in from the eastern touchline here at Woiwoi Oval. Pokes it up into the breeze. Doesn't quite come back far enough, and the score remains four points to nil. The Colts leading the minor premiers, the entrance Tigers, here at Woiwoi Oval. Yeah, good start of the game. Uh, only, well, just over five minutes old. It's been a cracking pace. Certainly has. King Comfort capitalising their first opportunity. Woods again with another of these towering kickoffs. Taken by Cooper. Gives it off to Coombs. Continue to work through the middle of the field, King Cumber. Now they come back the short side. Coombs again. Finds his front. Play the ball. Stone picks up another 10 metres. They swing to the middle, Pipers. Not an ideal pass, but he does well, gets the kick away. And unfortunately, it's a couple of metres too wide. And the entrance with another opportunity here to attack. Starting their set in the attacking half. Oh, they'll play the ball. Tackle zero here. 46 out. Yeah, great opportunity coming up here for the Tigers. They could probably see that they were a bit unfortunate with that first try, so uh, they regroup again. Yes, um, they made the mistake before and turned it over down this end, Paul. They won't do that too often, the Tigers. They were prolific with points this year. I think, I think the stat that I saw the other day was that they're the highest scoring team in any of the grades in the two East Central Coast Rugby League. As you see the big frame of Sean Sinclair go forward inside the 20. Oh, that ball's not ideal, and he's turned it over. Some want to dive on that, Jesse Byrne. Oh, the ball. Nice little offload there to Kate Donkin. Both sides happy to chance their hand a little bit here early. See Brody Cooper come out of dummy half. Doesn't get very far, though. Interesting, that fullback. He looks like he's got the same haircut as uh, the open grade home. There's, very, there's some very uh, adventurous haircuts from both the open grade and reserve grade for King Cumber, I've noticed. Question well, I won't be going to get my hair cut in King Cumber, that's for sure. Uh, no hair to cut anyway. No, uh, exactly right. As we see, the Colts cross into the attacking half. They come to their skipper, Mitch Clark. He decides to go high under plenty of attention from Bill Shaw. No mistake made at the back there. He's been safe so far, Joe Stewart. Here, yeah, the halfback and the lock forward for the Tigers just come together there. Mitch Clark and uh, Bill Short. You see referee Bowen blowing another penalty there. Just a little bit too slow in the ruck, the Colts. The entrance will breathe another sigh of relief. King Cumber will certainly have to capitalise on their opportunities today. The entrance averaging a miserly 6.6 .6 points a game in defence this season across their... 19 games thus far. Based on the fact they've already scored four, you wouldn't think the entrants are granting too many more opportunities if they continue their form from earlier in the season. Yeah, they shut them out, uh, well, a couple of months ago, round 15, 18-0, the Tigers defeated the, the Colts. So, um, yeah, they certainly great defence. It was a good run. A strong run. Sinclair's been good for them early. Go to the right. Stewart gets the ball, shows, beats the next. Couldn't quite get through that last tackle. Run down in the end. And swing it back to the left. There's Hamer. Maloney beats the first couple. Brought down a couple short of the line and tackle five. They come to Slee. It's a little dink in behind. Read well by Brody Cooper, but he couldn't quite sneak his way out of the in goal. Yeah, goal good, drop out. Sorry, good set of six there from the uh, the Tigers. Really quick play the balls, and they really had the Colts on the back foot. And uh, a good little kick to finish off with, and now they get another set. See what they can do with some mounting pressure and a repeat set here. Oh, 
will be talking of those haircuts. The man with the long locks, Reese Pipers, to get us back underway here. And it's a wobbly low dropout, as has become very much the fashion these days. Maloney reels it in comfortably and goes to ground 35 out. They come the short side, short. Great tackle ball and all there by Blake Donkin. Back through to Slee. Dummies to Maloney, gives it under to Sinclair. Defence converges on him quickly and doesn't let him go anywhere. About the right, Hamer. Finds Stewart. And again, the King come to defence more than up to the task. Grubber in behind. I'm wondering if he's got that down, has he? I think he might have. Yeah, I thought Reese Piper got a hand to it there, the 5 8 for the King Cumber Colts. So. Well, the officials converge and they award it, and we're all level, four points to all. Interesting to have a look at the replay here, Paul. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously the referee's in a better spot than we are. We're, we're a mile away, but um, yeah, they, they were stacked on that short side, the Tigers. It was about five on two. So they had to get a result. Uh, they've come up with the best result possible with the four pointers. I have to say there's three three match officials over there, an in goal touch judge, a touch judge, and a referee. They're surely between the three of them. I think they would have got it right. Let's have a look. Here's the replay. And take on the short side. Hamer with a little dink kick. Woods has tripped up a little in the contest. 100% right. He's had the air swing over the top there. In fact, it was the, uh, Kyle the, Lank. the winger. Yeah, Kyle Lang, sorry. Couple of surfy looking dudes out there for the Colts. Yeah, yeah. As, as they tend to be more often than not, the referee's on the spot and on the money. And Jake Slee. The opportunity to take the lead for a while. Jake Slee kicking at 81% this year. It's a pretty handy strike rate that anyone would take. Leading point scorer in the reserve grade competition. by some distance. And I've put the mock on him. <laughs> and the score remains four points all. Almost 15 gone here. That's so why we're going to have a uh, fairly hotly contested tussle on our hands here. Yeah, I mean, the, the Tigers, they've come out firing. It's four all. And made a couple of little mistakes early, but almost halfway through this first half, it's gone, it's gone really quick. Pipers gets us back underway. High, oh, deep kickoff. Even off of Maloney, cards it back with some oomph. Interesting stat. Sure. Interesting stat. Uh, one of these teams will be zero and two. Um, Tigers had their ladies' league tag go down, and, and um, the Colts just lost open grade. So uh, plenty of pressure on these uh, two boys. They don't want to be zero and two for their club. Yeah, especially the Colts. They, they won't have the chance to redeem themselves in the big dance either in the main game. Tigers will obviously take on the Wong Roos in that one. So cut it out almost to their own 40 metre line there. A good defensive set here from the Colts. Pin them inside their 40. Let's tackle five. It goes to Slee. Good pressure from Cooper on him. Brody Cooper now will bring it forward and tackle, tackle one on his 40. Lang gives it off to Byrne. Drive. Now they use Rosario. Mike Donkin coming in from his centre for a run. That little left side Pipers with the cutout. Great tackle around the ankles there on Jesse Byrne. Kick goes high. He's got plenty of time to think about it, Joe Stewart. Safe as houses back there. He's been good so far. Yeah, opening stages of this clash. Oh. Does well to hold on to that. It's a late inclusion. Woods in the 24 jumper. Carts that one forward. Did of course, come into the starting lineup. Forced a bit of a reshuffle with James Nixon being out from the wing, and they've replaced him with. A middle forward. A 
can already feel the tempo is a lot quicker than the open grade, which is what you expect. But uh, what a quick play the balls from both sides are they're getting over the advantage line from the opposition. So when you see the difference in players, the ability to find their front as you get up these higher levels. The Tigers go wide, now they come back in, finds Hamer. That'll be a change over there. Good tackle by Pipers. And, uh, yeah, big shout out. Thank you to the Central Coast Rugby League. Leanne Haynes is uh, giving you some uh, drinks, looking after us. It's uh, really nice. It certainly is. Nice to well looked after when we're uh, up here in the commentary booth. Doesn't happen much. Um, I know the Newcastle Under Rugby League, we didn't look after anybody, so apologies, Chris. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. So, well, we're not, not only that, we're spoiled with a pretty good venue here today as well at Woi Woi Oval. The pictures do tell the story. Yeah, it's, it's good local footy grounds. So it's just a shame they don't have a hill on the, the far side. But, uh, you know, this is, this is what it's all about, local footy grounds, isn't it? The atmosphere. There's a well-placed kick there, and the Tigers happy just to let that roll into touch. I'll take a scrum feed here. Just outside their own 20. I'm yet to sample the uh, sausage rolls down there or the um, okay, steak singers yet. Orimba okay. on the barbecue today. So uh, yeah. I can vouch for their bacon egg rolls. I, ha I had two just to be sure that they were good. Never, never be too uncertain on these things. As you see, Slee wanting to feed the ball, but as is want in the modern day, forwards can't get a scrum that's not really contested, get it, can't get it right. Comes out the back, and there's Shaw. Met strongly in defence. Go to that right edge, and there's Woods. So he's going to get to his feet. Side to go to the short side again. Both sides persisting quite a lot with short side attacks in the early stages of this first half. Yeah, it was the order of the day. Um, there was a lot of short side play in the open grade as well, so uh, maybe it's something to do oh. with the ovals. There's a mistake. Coughed up there. Straight out of the bread basket. It might be Maloney. Let's put that one down. It certainly is. First change on for the Tigers. Daniel Pepper on for Sean Sinclair. Sinclair very strong in his first stint. Looks like they've got a second one warming up as well. Maybe a second and a third. A lot of changes early. Yeah, unlimited interchange at this uh, level. So uh, pretty warm out there in the centre. So uh, both teams will be putting their hands up to come off for a breather. Certainly will. As we see, Brody Cooper take that one forward. Inside the attacking 40. Kate Donkin, he's got through a little bit of work early for the Colts when they've had the opportunity. All at the back to Pipers. And at the back to Brody Cooper. And he coughed it up, but might be a little bit hard done by there. Cooper, I thought he might have knocked that one back, and it might have been knocked down by the Tigers. But again, I'll defer the expertise of Rob Bowen out there in the middle in the pink. Yeah, it's just they were a bit fortunate there. The Colts, uh, Hammer got the bounce there. He was away. Been on everything so far, the halfback. It's the bounce of the ball didn't go his way on that occasion. Shaw trucks it up again from the scrum. And that's Maloney. Almost to halfway. Come to the left through Slee. Come loose. Another loose carry and it gets turned over. He's uh, still on the ground there, Slee, the 5'8", the, the Tigers. He's an ad insult to injury, a penalty to the Colts. He's not in a good way here, Jake Slee. He would be a massive loss if they will lose him for a period or the remainder of this game. The ref's called turn. It might have been a, um, an accidental backslam, just as they uh, met. Well, there's four tacklers in there. Looks like... Just had the air knocked out of him. There's plenty of air up here. Certainly a lot of air as see. well. <laughs> yeah. That's just you and I, though. 
Reese Pobbs will take the opportunity from this penalty, however. And King Cumber down into some prime attacking territory with a hope to break this deadlock between the two sides. Donkin to tap it. Gives it off to the second of the Rosarios. That's Elliot Rosario. Change is starting to come on for the Colts as well. Hardman, and he gives, gives it off to the other Rosario. Hardman to Pipers. Oh. He beat even himself there by the look of it. He turns it over again. Both sides just being ruled by execution. Yeah, it wasn't uh, bad thinking. I'll tell you, what if that pass sticks, he's over. Um, Logan Wiley, the back row. Showing fancy hands there with a little flick pass. But they'll sit deep to that left hand side too. They're still at about two or three out, out wide. See McCudden. Doesn't have much involvement today. Named originally in the second row, but got pushed out to the centres with the late reshuffle. It's Kearney playing that one. They're getting a real roll on here, the Tigers. Ducked under a couple there, the, uh, the number nine keeper. Certainly, de certainly did, and uh, they wouldn't have to swing too high to get him. He's not the tallest of players. Nice little freshen up out of dummy half. Partridge coming on, moving into the nine roll. Hamer kicks down. Oh, Diving slip style catch from Kyle Lang. He hasn't had too many involvements. When he's been involved today, it's been pretty entertaining. <laughs> that could have ended so much worse for Kyle Lang there. Hammer again was running through, and uh, if he was a fraction earlier, they could have been both KO'd. Certainly could have. There's a, there's a hundred ways that could have gone wrong for him, <laughs> I think. And only one that it went right, and he managed to pluck that one out as Hardman. Carts it forward over the 40-metre line. Pipers from inside the 40. Just a little too much width on it. Had plenty of leg, but it was a gamble and it didn't pay off. And now the entrance will be the ones. After a couple of sets defending inside their own half with an opportunity to attack for about 39 out. Yeah, I've mentioned a couple of times about the, the wind here at Woi Woi Oval. There's a couple of banners on the other side. You can see quite strongly how they're gusting. And I'd say the winds carry that one over, so just unlucky there, the Colts. A couple go out in the fall on this side already. Just have to adjust with that win. See Partridge goes to Slee. Good to see him back on his feet for the Tigers. Bounces out of a couple. Driven in a textbook tackle from Hardman. Partridge. Cooper with a nice little dart through. Go to the right, Harmon. Mills doing everything he can to weave his way towards the try line, but he's brought down a couple shots. They go to the short side. No, Partridge decides to go himself. Brought down inches short. Stop the short side again. Swing it back, Slee. Decides to go himself. Pokes his nose through. Can't get the arm free, however. And that was tackle five, so being the six now will be a handover. Yeah, good result for the Colts. They're under a lot of pressure there and um, managed to hold out there, so the coach will be happy with that. Certainly will. I had their work to cut out for them here to bring it out from about six out from their own line. Okay, Donkin with the first run. Chamberlain. Goes off to Blake Donkin. Donkins both play on this right edge for the Colts. Out the back. Strong run from Rosario. Questionable ball to Hardman there. And touch touches tipped it off referee Bowen. Again, another tick in the plus column for the referees. They're all over it today. Yeah, yeah it's a big... Obviously, it's a big occasion for the referees too, not only the players, but the referees. They, um, they want to make it on grand final day, whether it's first reserves or opens or league tag. So, uh, 
It's a big occasion for Rod Bowen and all the touchies. Doing a great job so far. As they always do. Exactly right. 20 Jordan Evans on now. It's a quick play, the ball. Partridge capitalised off the back of it. Walked in a hard tackle in the end. Seems to be a little bit more intense at the moment in the stride of the Tigers. Sinclair back on the field out wide. Look for him. No, they go oh. the other way. Little sweep around play. Did he get there? The crowd's celebrating, but I think he's a little bit short. A little lucky there. I think it was good luck, not good management. They go back to the right through Slee. To Hamer. Dummies to Sinclair. Skips across a couple. Can't beat Piper. Partridge now. Not dummy half. They go the short side. He kicks through. And it looks like it's going to be a try. I think it's McClelland out there in the centres. Poor Kyle Lang just sat back and watched that one sit up. Someone's taking some offence to something that's going on in, in that cluster of players. Referee. Referee yeah. Bowen awards a try to McClellan. I'm not sure who that was, but the kick went through, and I know it's hard, but it tells a junior to attack the football, and he just sat back and waited for the ball to come to him, and the Tigers just paid. Just waited, and then bang. It's Kyle Lang. He fell to his knees, I think, was the problem. We've seen before, he's not afraid to attack the football, so... Just lost his footing. And it sat up nicely for Sam McClelland. And the entrance Tigers take the lead for the first time today. Eight points to four with a kick to come. Just over six minutes remaining here in the first half at Woi Woi Oval. And see Jake Slee line up the conversion attempt. Again, not an easy one. Yeah, 12 in from touch on the eastern side of Woi Woi Oval. This is Tui's Central Coast Rugby League Reserve Grade Grand Final on Bar TV Sports. Wind seems to have picked up since he's put it on the tee. Yeah. A bit like Happy Gilmore, he's just got a tap at him. It's an interesting dance moves looks as he comes in and he makes no mistake for the second. That extends their lead. Ten points to four now, the Tigers lead over the King Cumber Colts. Expect nothing less from a man who's striking at north of 80% after he missed his first one. Old slippery sleep. It was high this time. Sits up nicely for Sinclair. Seeing him in those Tigers colours, it's like seeing a young Keith Galloway. <laughs> Same haircut going on. There's a couple of big poppers out there for both sides. Certainly is. Good run. Strong run up the middle by Koenig. Tigers looking like they're starting to harness the mo momentum. Partridge has been good since he's come on. Takes it almost to halfway. Woods into dummy half. Comes to Slee. Drops Sinclair underneath. Collard high, which is an impressive feat on a man that's probably the best part of six foot six. Slee goes to Hamer. Hamer kicks it flat and deep. Might be a little bit too big, though. They are deep in goals here, but they're not that deep, unfortunately. So it'll be a seven-tackle set for the Colts from the 20-metre line. Yeah, they are pretty big uh, in goals here. I reckon they're even bigger than 10 metres. They play rugby here as well, though, or...? Um, I'm not too sure if they play rugby here, but they're definitely bigger than 10 metres, just looking comparatively. It's right up there with 12 uh, or 13. St John Oval up at uh, Charlestown. They've got big in goals. Certainly is. The Colts now. Lang. Looking forward. Stone. Now they kind of pipe as Hardman. Steps through, beats. Sinclair's clutch and tackle. It's brought down in the next. So the fatigue starting to pay. Piper's shooting up on the inside. Another kick out on the full by the Colts. Yeah, that one, he, uh, he really got a good uh, boot on with that one. That was uh, further back. That was in row five. It's certainly interesting. You're starting to see some of the bigger bodies. Even though they've had some spells, they're starting to tire, and the little men around 
the edges are starting to find some holes. See Woods. Oh, great offload there. Stewart in support. Gets it away, Partridge. Thought about giving it off then to uh, McCudden, but decided the better of it. Woods. One out running. Charging on his own inside the 20. Partridge goes out the back to Slee, to Hamer. Jordan Evans. One of the interchange players on the field. Just short of 10 out. You know, that short side again, Hamer just dinks it in behind. Oh. McClellan couldn't quite reel that one in to add to his first try, and it'll be another seven tackle set for the Colts. Here again, they were stacked in that short side. Five runners. A few options there for Hammer. And oh, three shots. Vipers. Had it juggling up around his head. I've never seen a tap go like that before, and then Sinclair found his ribs for him. Colts played on tackle one now. Matthew Stone trundling forward. Wiley. Takes it over halfway. Ellie Coombs oh. gets an offload out the back. It was scrappy. It's scooped up by Starling. Pipers with a cutout ball. Did no favours to Jesse Byrne there. Byrne did well to reel it in under significant pressures. Pipers goes the short side. Pretty well weighted kick in the end. Chases his own kick, but Stewart shrugs off him and the next tackler. Stewart's been impressive so far. He takes it out to the 20 for tackle one. Both sides just starting to settle into a bit of a rhythm here, Paul. Just getting into the arm wrestle, so to speak, as we tick down in the last couple of minutes of this first half. Yeah, it's the first time the Colts have been down this far down the uh, Tigers' territory, I think, since the first five minutes. Put a couple of kicks, obviously, out in the fall, but uh, uh, would have been hoping for a repeat set there, and you know, the Tigers got away with it. The Tigers look so much quicker at the play of the ball. They're really getting over that advent line. Certainly, Kay Donkin trying the one-on-one on, -one on Sinclair there. Couldn't get away with it. Comes to Slee. They go wide to McCudden. Gets an offload away. Probably went forward, but it didn't matter because it was knocked on anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Jackson Stubbs there just making a tackle on suspicion there on uh, Brody Mills. Certainly was, and we ticked down. Only got just over 30 seconds. And as we see the replay, definitely went forward out of the hand. And, yep, Mills, not even a chance to reel that one in. <laughs> Questioning whether either side would be interested in actually packing this scrum with only 20 seconds remaining, but the Colts, like one last roll of the dice here in the first half of this Central Coast Rugby League Reserve grade decider. They sit deep, they're not going to go for the kick. All right, Clark, five as he goes himself. Oh. Gets an offload, almost a Rob Bowen, Hardman instead. He was through if he took it. I don't know, I've seen Rob Bowen in open field before, I don't know if he had 50 metres in him. There goes the Hooter, they scoot out. Josh Starling, he's broken the first couple if he can get his arm free. Speaking of hit on suspicion, it was one of those in back play. But that'll be all she wrote for the first half of this Central Coast Rugby League reserve grade decider. It is the entrance Tigers leading 10 points to four. We'll take a little break from Woi Woi Oval and we'll rejoin you in a few minutes with the second half on Bar TV Sports.
Welcome back for the second half of the Tui Central Coast Rugby League Reserve Grade Decider here from Woi Woi Oval on Bar TV Sports. It's currently the minor premiers, the entrance Tigers 10, leading the King Cumber Colts 4. As we are about to get back underway for this second half. It's been plenty of end-to-end -end footy and plenty of excitement. We've seen a bit of everything so far, Paul. Yeah, it's been a really entertaining first half. Uh, see the entrance, they, they get the ball, quick play the balls and get a real good run through and the Colts said, hang on, they got a really good try to uh, start things going, the Colts. 10-4, it could easily be 20-4, to four, but um, they're hanging on and we should have a cracking second half. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a very interesting second half. And the Colts will definitely want to be the first to score and uh, we touched on it earlier, the entrants renowned for their defence, especially in this reserve grade competition this year. So the Colts can't afford to let in too many more tries and expect to reel them back in. That man with the ball in hand has been one of their best for the Colts so far, Pipers. Looks like they're a bit short of the tee, though. Wouldn't it be a um, local footy game without uh, no tee or no football? Or Yeah, no, I've, uh, I've been the one responsible many times, the referee, for leaving the football in the sheds. <laughs> It's always, you know, always some sort of unusual delay at the start. As Pivers gets us underway, he goes high, not as deep this time. Cooper did very well to get back there and take that one. Oh, good take. Slips catch there by Jake Woods down on his knees. I want it's a bit a, better service than that out of dummy half. He's got a bit of uh, young D Daniel Abraham about him. Woods? Certainly does. Yeah, I can see that. Abe's would be a bit dirty if he found out you said that. He'd uh, certainly rate his arms much better than that. <laughs> I said young. <laughs> I think you're about the same age. He's still, he's still going around. Daniel Abraham up in the Newcastle competition. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go another year. As we see Shaw cut on forward almost to the 30. And again, we see the entrance just getting this customary roll on it. The cleanest of passes, but he finds his target there. Hamer kicks it in behind. The defenders might have been lucky to get away with closing him off there, and he's in a bit of hurt. All right, shoulders from two on him. Yeah, it looks like the referee's called time off here. Yeah, I don't think any of the officials have picked it up, but both those defenders both stepped inwards at him. I don't think either of them used their arm. Not that it matters whether they did or not in that scenario. Yeah, he had a good first half, um, Jared Hammer. He's... Uh, Hopefully he's okay. The, the Tigers don't want to lose him. No, they don't. They're very reliant on their two halves. They've got a strong halves pairing for this standard of footy. And looking at having seen plenty of the Central Coast this year, both their halves would probably get a start in 80% of the first grade clubs. What's the competition? They're blessed with a little bit of depth there. Probably a reason that they're in three of the four deciders today. Yeah, very dominant, the Tigers and, and the Roos. The Colts have done a great job to have two teams represented here on grand final day. Definitely don't have the budget of the other two clubs. No, they don't. Good to see, though. Obviously, a good reflection of their depth. They also went a fair way into the final series in the first grade competition. Of course, their big name recruit at the moment has been former Scottish international Ian Henderson running around in the first grade for them. As we see, Matt Stone awarded a penalty. Stripped there by Woods, who looks thoroughly confused by all the proceedings. Wipers the kick for touch. He's done well there. He's kick. picked up almost 30 metres. Good catch on the crowd. You don't win anything, but uh, well done. See Logan Wiley taking it inside the 30. Come out oh. of Starling. Bailey Coombs has had way too long to think about that. He's having a look at the defence. And he's put that one down and probably summed up a lot of King Cumber's attacking opportunities so far. Yeah, I hope this is not a trend. Uh, we saw it in the open grade and even a bit of the league tag. They had the break at half time and both teams are coming out the second half just a little unsettled. Hopefully, uh, yeah, it doesn't continue. Looks like... Hamer's back and, and fully fit again. 
give it off. And there goes Bill Shaw carting it forward. And Woods, I tell you what, for a late call up, he's done very well today. He's been in the thick of everything. Yeah, he's certainly getting uh, plenty of uh, game time. And, you know, they've got a penalty here. This will help the Tigers' cause. Certainly will. Yeah, he's got through most most of the minutes of the first half. So, as we said, he came in as a late inclusion for James Nixon. And they had a bit of a reshuffle. It's not the biggest of the forwards, but he's certainly throwing his weight around in the middle there, Woods. As they pick up about 12 metres. It'll be McCudden. One of the players affected by that reshuffle moving out oh. the centres and he's broken through, easy as you like. Steps outside the fullback. He's going to be pulled down only a metre or so short. Slice through like a hot knife through butter there. As they come to Slee, Woods beats the first. Hardman comes again. Ali Coombs is going to have to be careful. He's spending a lot of time on those tackles up around the head and neck of his opponents. Been spoken to already by referee Rob Bowen. As they come wide, Hamer. For Daniel Pepper. It's free, plays the ball. Right side, Maloney, can he get it down? King Cumber's done very well there. Some rushing players in the end, three or four in the tackle. End up with three in there. And Maloney will go back and play it. Ten out, one of the King Cumber players appealing to Rob Bowen that it was stolen in a try scoring situation there, but it was well after he'd blown his whistle. Yeah, see they on the replay here. Did great, the uh, King Cumber lads there. A couple of small bodies on a big man charging on. Uh, coming on top. Pipers is wrapped around him like a pretzel. Oh, Fred Bowen. Bit of a false start there, he says. So he's come back. Maloney to play it. Play it to Nathan Cooper. Goes out the back to Hamer. To Slee. To Woods. Dummies across. Gives it off to Stewart. Been elusive today, but he can't get anywhere that time. Back to Slee. Toes through. I don't think anyone else knew that kick was coming, and it'll roll dead in goal. And for the third or fourth time today, the Colts. Oh. He just tackled himself, yep. pretty much. The Colts will have a seven tackle set from their 20 metre line. Yeah, big set coming up here for the Colts. They've been down here now for a few sets. They want to get out of here. we will finish the set with a good kick at least. Certainly well. Hardman, a good run. He's added a bit of oomph since he's come on. Scrappy play the ball. Josh Starling wrapped up by the one marker who was square. Hardman gives it to Wiley. Oh. He throws a flick past the no one. It's a little bit early for King Cumber to be going to panic station, but it seems that that's a bit of the mood out there. Oh. Charge down. Shaw. Can he make it? He's got support with him. He's got McCutton in support. He gives it to him on the outside. McCutton steps back inside Cooper. Oh. Gives it off to the other Cooper. And somehow, again, King Cumber have scrambled and managed to stop that. But all the pressure on them now is Hamer. Gives it off to Daniel Pepper. What can the Tigers do here? They've had plenty of territory and possession down this end. they got numbers left. Just got to go through the hands. Shooting defensive well. King Cumber needs to really readjust. It's still four on one nice. out the left. Oh. He's coughed it up there, Slee. I'll tell you what, it was a massive gamble by Blake Donker to shoot up there and put the pressure on Slee. But it's come off in absolute spades. As we see this charge down from Bill Shaw. It's just textbook, isn't it? Sort of kick pressure yeah. you want to see at all times. Good footy all round. Tigers put the pressure on and the Coles just hang on again. As you said, that scrambling defence is just absolutely brilliant. But, um, yeah, the Tigers, they're probably in the end there, they just bombed an opportunity. They had uh, four men on one out to the left. And, well, nearly uh, seven minutes gone in this half. And I reckon we've had maybe one or two tackles at the other end of the field. And they've had most of the possession. So their coach, Kyle Whitford, will be very disappointed that uh, they haven't managed to post some points early in this second half. Get plenty of numbers in defence there. I'm not sure how Sinclair got out of that scrum and managed to get the guy running it back, but he has. Wiley carts it forward again, and there's Sinclair again. Looks like the entrants have made the decision to turn the tempo up here. 
Oh. <laughs> Big defence now. That's tackle three, and they still haven't made it out of their 10 metre line, King Cumber. He wants the next carry. Starling puts his hand up and does well, picks up almost 10 metres. Again, no surprise, Sinclair make another tackle. I'm going to say, if he get his hand on this one, that'll be five in a row. Five tackles, only the 30. It's a great defensive oh, set. Oh. And that's a horrible kick out of dummy half. Just can't seem to take a break at the moment, the Colts. Move. And Pepper's coughed it up as he's got out to play the ball. There might have been a sneaky little hand in there from Hardman, but he's gotten away with it. Pepper blowing up Deluxe, however. And again, as they say, I'm yet to see a referee change their decision on one of these. Hardman apologies, it was Starling. Oh no, he's just got that up cold. The Colts now have an opportunity to try and get into the attacking half. Burn to play it. They're very bunched here, the Colts. They're out on their feet. They've had to do a lot of defence this uh, second half. Certainly taking its toll. Stubbs in for a run in field. Good run. He's knock Pepper backwards. Uh, yeah. He tried, tried to play it a little bit too quickly there, Stubbs. He had it at the quick play the ball, but not as quick as he thought. He's got to get to your feet and play that one. You see here. He did well to get... He came out on top against the front rower. Yeah, that's one of those ones. 50, 50, 50 go either way. Um, I just think Cooper probably just didn't have quite enough time to get his arms off him. If he hadn't, then it probably would have gone against him, so... Unfortunately for King Cumber, is another set. Only finds him just inside the attacking half, and they turn it over. Woods again. Cooper to Slee. Bill Shaw. Cooper. Again, Woods puts his hand up for another run. He's not shy doing the hard stuff. Sinclair standing at first receiver. Slee out the back. They go to Slee. Slee to Hamer. He goes out the back to Stewart. Stewart skips across. Shrugs off Pipers, but Pipers comes again. The, the walking definition of tenacity, young Reese Pipers. He just, <laughs> he's been shrugged off a few times, but still just keeps coming back. Starting to be a little bit of niggle too after the tackles. Is. Woods with it on the last tackle to Sinclair. I'm not sure that was what they were looking for, but he gets the offload away to Woods go. again. Shaw goes out to McCudden. McCudden steps back there. He's going to go himself. He throws it. He's given it away. Kendrick. Has Kendrick scored? He has. Beautiful offload as he was going to ground there. Just keeping the football alive, and it's the entrance Tigers 14. King Cumber Colts 4. What about giving up on that play then? Yeah, so did I. And they're very lucky, the Tigers, because again, their winger, James Nixon, was unmarked here. As the ball's going through the hands, all we've got to do is keep it going here. And McCullin comes back in field, but it doesn't really matter. They got the points. But I'm starting to think, what's James Nixon done? He can't get his hands on the ball. They won't pass it to him. A good run here. Look at that pass from McCullin. Koenig does well. He still had some work to do once he caught it, the big fella. Dots it down next to the post, but that might be a symptom of uh, that, that late reshuffle the Tigers end up going into. And you've got McCudden in the back row, and Norman plays the back row, playing out on that left edge, and they're probably not used to the, uh, you know, the old draw and pass, more of the cart up the middle. But, um... Big yeah, kick here. So it's Braden Mills on that left wing, the centre that's readjusted. But, yeah, he'd be uh, out there going, I've been pushed from the centre to the wing, and I'm catching a cold. <laughs> Massive kick here to go uh, 12 in front. Certainly is, and uh, the back most kick is in from here, but certainly the boot of Jake Slee. And the Colts they just look devoid of attacking options, really, and struggling to complete their set, so. Makes no mistake. Extends the Tigers' lead out to 12. 16 points to four. They lead in the Tui Central Coast Rugby League Reserve Grade Decider on Bar TV Sports here from Moy Oval. 
Yeah, big set coming up here for King Cumber in defence. They really need to keep the Tigers down in their own, well, not even get over the 40, really. Just keep them down here and try and come up with something. Yeah, high. That kick off's probably not going to help. You see Koenig, the try scorer, carted out over the 20. Now Sinclair. Got some footwork, the big unit. <laughs> Out over halfway, a good 15 metre run. Yeah, what's that? Three tackles already up for halfway. This is where. Oh, oh King Cumber. Breathe a sigh yeah. of relief. Yeah, but that's this is where uh, the Tigers, they're winning, winning that arm wrestle. They quick play the balls and they're getting good metres. But uh, yeah, another chance for the Colts. They're still in it. There's still over 20 minutes remaining. They're only 12 down. Like that. 14 gone in this second half. And I, I'm going to say it's been less than half a dozen tackles that King Cumber have had in the opposition half. Yeah. As Piper's brought in the short of halfway. Numbers in the tackle from the entrance. Quite unusual too. Um, the first half was a blistering pace and... Uh, a few stop starts in this second stanza. Yeah. See, it's starting to take its toll on a few of the bodies. It'll come through Logan Wiley. Back to the middle, Hardman. Seems like he's playing a bit of a hybrid lock 5 8 hooker role since he's come on. Yeah. Pipers to Wiley again. Pipers and McClellan having a bit of push and shove in back play. That's tackle five. Pipers. A little slice kick. Sits up nicely for Mills. He yeah. brings it back out of the in goal. Wasn't sure there if uh, Piper was checked there as he was running through it. Yeah. Referee had a good uh, view of it as well and, and it was play on, but uh, not a bad option with the deep in goals here to, to kick it in there behind and try and get a result, but uh, not to be this this occasion for the Colts. Certainly not, as you say, that bit of feeling starting to creep in. So you see Woods breaks free of the tackle, not hell. Gets the offload away as he's on his knees. So what, any chance a late call-up ends up being the uh, best on him? Wouldn't be far <laughs> away, he's been in everything. Kearney. Almost four to halfway again. It's He's been impressive too, Jacob Koenig. He's had a couple of really strong runs. That's a good tackle on him by Wiley. Yeah, the depth of their uh, forward rotation on the bench certainly been an asset for the Tigers today. Kyle Lang decides not to attack that one. Just happy to see it bounce over his head and give his big boppers a breather. Yeah, they've certainly not lost nothing when their uh, bench forwards have come on the Tigers. Well, it's been a good effort, as you said, Chris, earlier on. Their uh, defence has been the benchmark all year in this reserve grade comp. And to only concede six per game is it's a credit to all of the uh, defensive department. It certainly is, and if they keep playing the way they have for the opening part of this second half, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't concede any more, but hopefully for the neutrals and the Colts fans, we can see at least one to liven this contest up. A little bit of trouble here, Cooper. Well, you can't quite uh, really tell from that replay uh, what happened to him, but it looks like he's going to... He's something in his eye, has he? He is spring. Could be a bit of pollen or something. Yeah, there's certainly no animosity when he got up, so it's certainly not any indication that he's uh, suffered some Hudson Young treatment or anything like that. As you see the second of the Rosario brothers back on the field, Elliot. Just a bit better attacking set from the Colts. This is Kate Donkin. Looks to get the play the ball away. And it's Alex Rosario now with the ball. They're running in tandem, the Rosarios. Again, Elliot. 
decided to take this whole set on their back. The Rosario pair. Fuck the skipper. It's a wobbly oh, kick up. A chance. Sits up. Oh. oh. Interesting to see what referee Bowen decides here. I think he's hit the nail on the head. I think Joe Stewart did well, but that bounce was just a little difficult one. And no surprise on who the man was coming through putting pressure on him, but uh, Pipers again. Yeah, they need a bit of luck, the Colts, and um, now they've got it. Massive opportunity coming up here, full set of six. I think that was the first completion of six that they'd done that, that previous set, so uh, big chance here. Certainly is, as we see, Brody Cooper take it forward up to the 10 metre line. Option set, left and right. Come out to the left to Elliot Rosario. He's been back on for two minutes. He's been through our four or five hit-ups already. Now they come to Pipers. He decides to go himself. There's no concern about running the ball, Pipers. He's done plenty of it today. Now Alex Rosario carting it up. Tracks plenty of defenders. As you say, he might actually be held up here. He's ended up going across the line. Yeah, that's that's a shame because they set deep for the next play on the right. And just that uh, hold up in the end goal, it just allows the Tigers to get reset here. Certainly does. Not to just have the one marker. Go out the back. Clark. Almost a hospital ball there for Cooper. He already had two defenders on him as he caught it. Set well on both sides. Which side do they go? They've got numbers on the short side. Far. Cut out ball. Stubbs. Has he got it down? Got the referee and touch judge are happy. Certainly has. 16 points to 8. The Colts are back in this with a kick to come. Yeah, well done. Persistence. Uh, you know, I said they had a repeat set there and a couple of penalties. And all of a sudden, decent position in your opposition half. And they've come up with a, a perfect result. Points and a lovely pause pass there and Stubbs he had a bit of work to do but so uh, done really well as you say on the replay there we can see a great ball from the skipper Mitch Clark here ball just to hold up the defender enough to give Stubbs the room to scoot around on the outside yeah, 13 tries for Jackson Stubbs so he knows how to cross the line he does Reese Pipers will have his work cut out to try and reduce the deficit to six Certainly liven up this contest if he can knock this one over. Hits it well. We had good distance, but just not quite the line. So the score remains 16 points to 8. The entrance Tigers leading the King Cumber Colts. Just over 15 remaining here in the Tui Central Coast Rugby League Reserve Grade Decider on Bar TV Sports. That's certainly uh, livened up the contest a little, Paul. Yeah, and it'll, it'll give the Colts a, a lot of heart to think, well, all we've got to do is just complete our sets and uh, we're in a chance. And, you know, that paid dividends there. So. As you touched on, it was the first set they've completed this half and the first oh. full set they've had in the opposition half, as we see everyone standing around and watching. Pipers ends up diving on that kickoff. Rosario. Can't quite catch it on the cameras, but down that southern end of the ground, you've got a, a big contingent of, you know, good run. Big contingent of uh, Kincumber Cult supporters, and then just to their right, a big contingent of Tiger supporters. Um, interesting to see if they come together. Yeah, certainly. Plenty of voice down that end. As we see, Hardman gives it on the outside. Look at the numbers here, if they can get the ball away. Blake Donkin with a good run there. Picked up almost 30 metres in the end. Looking like they've got a real spring in their step now, the Colts. Pipers. Goes to Bender. He's only just joined us off the interchange bench for his first oh. entry into the game, but that was tackle five. They didn't realise, I didn't realise either, so. No, they did so well, the Colts, after that shonky restart to be pinned down the corner to get so far up the field. And yeah, just a disappointing end, but now it's the Tigers' turn. Big defensive set now, that's right. It's Jordan Evans plays it, and they come the short side through Sam McClellan, one of the early try scorers. McClellan will play it. Partridge for Maloney. 
Big contact there. Surprise all, all bodies got up then. Well, the contact scenes have gotten bigger as we get later into this game. McCudden brought down by the ankles. Great tackle by Clark. Decided that both parties going on with that one a little. Referee Bowen happy to let him go. Daniel Pepper. Tries to spin out, gets the arm free, but can't find anyone to offload it to. They have to go to the sky here. Yeah, they'll come off the boot of Slee, you'd think. That's where they go. Probably not quite the kick he wanted, but it'll end up all right. Stubbs doesn't want to attack it. He's just happy to let it bounce into touch. Yeah, it's always a lottery when you put the ball up in the air. And so what if that ball bounces the other way? There was three Tigers running in on it. There was no, no Colts within QE. The closest Colt was Jackson Stubbs, and he was in reverse. Now the Colts again. Bonds does in the familiar position of working it out from their own end. As we said, ticking down now. Just over 12 remaining. And still want to be the next to score again, the Colts. Go the short side off this scrum. Good run by Stubbs. Looks like about 14 metres. Cade Donkin. Starting to get a bit more of a roll on here. And the familiar side for the Colts today, the two Rosarios running in tandem. This time it's Alex that takes the ball forward. Sounds like a video game, the Rosario brothers. It does. Oh, Hartman's put it down on halfway. There's been about five knock-ons in there, so we'll have a scrub. It'll be a Tigers feed. And that's, again, just a representation of all that's happened. Yeah, it's, you know, they get points and they clock off. You see it a lot, but uh, they're still hanging in there. I mean, it's still still over 10 minutes remaining, eight points, but uh, they keep inviting the Tigers into their territory. It's going to get dangerous for them. It's a good tackle by Jordan Evans that forced a mistake there. He's touched on, I've said it a few times, the impact of the bench players, specifically for the Tigers, has been huge today as we see Evans there go forward with the ball in hand. Maloney steps back across the rough beast, Rosario. Can't beat the attention of Harbin and Donkin. Partridge to Slee. Gordon Evans. Good strong tackle there by Elliot Rosario. They need to find some sort of spark here, the Colts. Elliot Rosario with another good tackle. Partridge skips up out of dummy half. Tries to poke his head through the line, but he's brought down by Mitch Clark. It's tackle five. What are they going to do here? They go to sleeve. He just rolls it in behind. And again, the man to take it is Pipers. Hamer with a stray arm over the collar, but the side's better of it. Strong defence. Three, three numbers in the tackle from the Tigers. Cooper runs it out, just over his 10 for tackle three. They're in trouble here in their bunch, the Colts. It's not a good sign. And that's a penalty for a flop tackle. That's a silly penalty from the Tigers. Oh, I don't, I didn't think that was going to reach touch there. No, it wasn't, it's not counting anyway. Free balance, he hasn't given in the mark. You can see straight away Jake Sanders was real dirty on himself. You can see almost as it, the instant he landed on him, he knew what he'd done. It's just too tempting to resist sometimes. Pipers. He's made sure of that one. It certainly has. It's ended up two-thirds of the way back in the grandstand. And the Colts all, all of a sudden with a real sense of urgency as we tick down under 10 minutes remaining here at Woi Woi Oval in this reserve grade decider on Bar TV Sports. Take it forward to the 40. What can they come up with here? Who's going to be the man to conjure something for the Colts? Elliot Rosario, he's got through a mountain of work since he's come back on for them. Go to the right, Clark. Move up. It's Blake Donkin, one of two sets of brothers out here for the Colts. The Donkins and the Rosarios. Sort of kick early there. Oh, they get the bounce. bounce. Oh, the offload. Yeah, he's passed off the ground there, unfortunate. 
Thought he was going to get the bounce and score, and that would have set a real cat amongst the pigeons. Yeah, it would have set us up for a grandstand finish. Not a bad kick. Just in that no man's region and gets a lovely bounce, and well, Stubbs was screaming for it. Got it too late. But yeah, and unfortunately, turns from being a handover to a penalty. Entrance, the kick from Slee only picks up about 10 or 11 metres. Shaw cuts that one forward, almost out to the 30. They've been really strong after contact today, the entrance Tigers, picking up extra metres each time they run it. Maloney. Again, finds his front. And to say the entrance at this stage with one hand on the minor major premiership double. Scrappy passing from the Tigers, but it's sticking at the moment. See Pepper play it. Come the short side. Hamer with a slice kick looking for the touch line. Cooper doesn't want to see it going to touch. Realise the urgency of the situation and brings it back. Or he's met by Walsh. Another good tackle from the Tigers. Colts going to have to find something special here. Again, they're bunched. Not many options. Tigers play it down now in back play. They don't seem to be going too far at this stage of Colts. Elliot Rosario takes it out over the 30 for tackle four. And his brother Alex. Tackle five and they haven't made it to their 40 yet. It's a predicament they find themselves in. Charge down there. Oh. Knocked on by Hamer. That'll be six more. Referee Bowen actually said that that wasn't past the charge down the first one. It was just a deflection. The Colts, what can they do here? Ooh. McClellan could find himself in a bit of trouble here. No. Chamberlain decides to take the quick tap. He's injected himself in the last few minutes. He's been quiet early. They need something now, the Colts, if they're going to win this one. Who can stand up for them? Cade Donkin. All of a sudden they're starting to play some front foot football. Starling goes on his own. Takes it inside 30. They're set deep to the left here if they come to Pipers. He's got Wiley with him. He goes to the short ball, but the entrance read that. Pipers to the short side. They go back to the middle. Matt Stone carts it to 12 out from the line. Centre field, that's tackle five. What have they got here? They come, Chamberlain, kicks it in behind. They force him in the in goal. That was the second best result, isn't it? it certainly is. A... I thought he'd managed to weasel his way out of there, Joe Stewart. He's only it was centimetres the... in it, I think. It wasn't the best kick, but it gets the right result. So, uh, you know, the lucky there, Colts are still in it, but there it's running out of time. Interesting to see Ricky Chamberlain really inserting himself in this game in the last few minutes. A couple of kicks, a couple more scoots. Speaking of interesting, we've got front rower Sean Sinclair taking the goal line dropout. He can do anything. Certainly can. That wasn't too shabby. As you see Coombs wind up. I haven't seen too much of him since his early involvement. Look oh, at Stone. Now they come, Pipers out in front. Gives the ball to a flat foot of Jesse Byrne, who doesn't end up going anywhere as he attracts the attention of McClellan. Kingcumber, what can they conjure here? Pipers. I feel like he could be the man for them, but that's not going to be the occasion. And he's just oh. coughed that up there. Just coughed that up. And put the commentator's curse on him. <laughs> Yeah, just rushing things a little. You'd have to think that that'd be... Not going to get too many more opportunities down here. Oh, yes. Yeah, just coughed it up. Just trying to rush it a little. Just on four minutes remaining now. Yeah, he's played well, the 5-8 uh, the for the um, for the Colts. Just a little bit of fatigue there. Just unlucky. 
That could have been the last throw of the dice for the Colts too. There's under five remaining. We might have seen him try and go for a push here, but that's him interested. There's Woods back on the field. And the Tigers do here. The message will be going out to them. I think it'll be a pretty clear one of just complete and kick to the corner. I don't have to do anything fancy when you're four minutes remaining and you're up by eight. Woods again. His second hit up this set. Continues marching forward. Brought down by Stone in the end. Now Sinclair. Oh, Big frame. Gets the arm free as well. Picks up an extra six or seven metres. Three Bowen sends him back. Yeah, I'm sure. Weird thing is, even though the Tigers have got the momentum, they won't mind them. Just choose up a little bit more time. Yep. Oh. Another oh, player down, another stoppage. Yeah, another, been the, the another clash of heads here when they've gone in to make the tackle. With his own teammate by the look of it. Bit of blood on the football by the look of it. <laughs> it's a free interchange for Steeden. Poor Jake Woods looking very confused about what's He's, going yeah, on. Yep. Just over the top. Little, little bump of heads. A bit of friendly fire. It's been the story of the day, the second half of these grand finals today. The first half's fast and flowing, the second half's. Plenty of stoppages. Yeah, plenty of stop starts in open grade and ladies league tag. I thought we were set for golden point there. And ended up being 10-4, but uh, final 10 minutes it was touch and go. You see Stone help from the field. Hopefully all's well with him as we tick down just the three minutes remaining now. You'd have to think King Cumber are going to need something special here. So is it right if the entrants win this? This will be their fifth reserve grade grand, top, grand final in a row? No, they've been dominant. I didn't know that it was up to five. That's a bloody good effort. It's at 2015 and on. Yeah. That is impressive. See Slee go high. I don't envy Cooper, but he takes it cleanly. Gets on the outside. Can he break through? Not quite. King Cumber, all the work to do here. Just under three minutes remaining. 16 points to eight. The, uh, the Entrance Tigers lead the King Cumber Colts. Donkin going sideways. That's not going to help their cause. He's tried hard today, the back row. He's, he's had a good, strong game for the Colts. He certainly has. A few players that have been real standouts for them. There's one of them, Pipers, with a little dink in behind. It's a little bit too heavy, though. And Tom Stewart more than up to it. Breaks the first tackle. Can't get free of the attention of Logan Wiley. And you'd have to think that'll be all she wrote. Under two minutes now. The Tigers just need to complete this set. You see some players going down with cramp in the background. Wood, speaking of people standing out, a late call-up. He has been in absolutely everything. I don't think he hasn't done a score a try. He's had a try assist. So is this man, Sinclair. He's probably been one of the best, if not the best on field. Just the fact, add the fact that he can take a mean goal line dropout doesn't yeah. hurt, hurt his stats. They march on here. They're happy to slow the clock down, but still plenty of front football. Hamer. Been charged down, reeled in, Pipers. Oh. Oh, done well there, Jesse Byrne, but better taking that cleanly. He might have been away. And now ticked down, less than 60 seconds remaining. It yeah. sums up the Colts afternoon, doesn't it? The, uh, the little fumble and just have to stop to get, regather the ball. Yeah, just hasn't been clean. Hasn't been clean in possession. You see Chamberlain come out to Pipers. The only way they... The only way they can get involved in this now is a possible eight-point try, and that would be, not be the way you'd want to see a grand final leveled up. Chamberlain, last 15 minutes, he's found his kicking boots. Let's 
going on here? The entrance had the ball and Hamer's tackled Starling. 20 seconds remaining and the entrance Tigers are going to be the 2019 Reserve Grade Premiers. They'll wind down the clock here, take their time, slow it down enough, they'll probably only play the ball one more time. Five seconds, he'll try and take all of them here, Chase Partridge. I don't know if the whistle's actually gone here. <laughs> now it has, and that'll be full time. The Entrance Tigers are your 2019 Tui Central Coast Rugby League Premiers. Running out winners 16 points to 8 over the King Cumber Colts. King Cumber gallant, but uh, just couldn't match it with the Tigers today, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> just looking at some of the celebrations. One of the supporters just put the biggest hit on one of his teammates. So <laughs> I hope no. they're good, mates. But yeah, uh, great effort from the, uh, the Tigers. Um, yeah, they proved to be the benchmark all year and it said a great effort by the Colts but it just weren't good enough and the Tigers deserve that. Um, they've been the strongest team all year and well done, five in a row. Certainly have. Congratulations to the Tigers. You can pick a handful of players from both sides that stood out. Uh, we'll leave that uh, maybe maybe to the officials of the day. And uh, Yeah, they've got a tough job, haven't they? They certainly will. And uh, we might wrap up from here. The Entrance Tigers running out winners, 16 points to 8 over the King Cumber Colts, the Reserve Grade Premiers for 2019. Thanks for your help, Paul, and uh, we'll take a spell and make sure everyone tunes back in for the first grade decider yet to come. No worries, mate.